Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're safe, I hope you're healthy, I hope you've got a big smile on your face, and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here, Happy New Year, I know I'm a few days late, I've just been taking a little break, but we are back, 2021 is about to be a year of growth and elevation for us all. So as I mentioned before in the Head and Shoulders video, which by the way, it includes some major nuggets about market structure, so if you haven't watched it, I would highly recommend to do so, I will leave the link in the description below. As I mentioned in that video, we are going to do a few videos minor series, let's say, to show the similarities between some of the most widely practiced quote-unquote retail methods of analysis to more advanced or quote-unquote institutional concepts to help you all with a better understanding of these methodologies. So in today's video, we'll be talking about the break and retest strategy, what makes it a little bit incomplete and the similarities of it to some concepts that we use. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Very quickly and briefly, let's go through what break and retest is and how it's used so you refresh your memory about exactly what it is. I'm gonna start off with your normal support and resistance and trend lines where let's say you have a zone of support and you constantly see the market is rejecting it and bouncing up from that level. Whenever it tends to break that zone of support to the downside, oftentimes a lot of traders are waiting for a pullback for that support or floor to turn into a resistance or a ceiling, and then they'll look to trade this the opposite way. In a way, at these two points, the market has respected that zone of support. However, over there, it broke it, and then it pulled back to retest it, hence the terminology, break and retest. And there's many break and retest traders in the world where it's not just about the support, um, it would be the resistance as well. So the same way this broke below the support and the support turned into a resistance, there would be traders that would be waiting, for example, for a break of a resistance to the upside and a retest of it as a support and they'll look to buy that to the upside. This can actually be used utilizing it with trend lines as well, where you can imagine it's a trend line that's either going up or down, but the same ideology applies to it, where you're expecting to see rejection of that trend line multiple times and trade based on it. And if we tend to break, for example, below this bullish trend line, people would then be waiting for a retest of that and then trading that to the downside. That's practically all break and retest is. Now, oftentimes within a trending market, and that's the second point over there, the market structure, within a trending market, this break and retest strategy is used a lot because you would tend to see the beginning of a bullish trend where you have your three waves that we have spoken about in the head and shoulder video. And oftentimes you would see people go ahead and mark up, for example, the high of this zone as a previous zone of resistance that is now likely to turn into a zone of support. And they would be expecting this to revisit that level and then take the trade to the upside. And don't get me wrong, break and retest can be a very profitable strategy to use. However, there are some issues with it. Break and retest can actually make you a lot of money. However, it might not be as consistent as we would like it to be. And for the people who have been trading break and retest, I'm sure you will agree with me when I say there are scenarios that everything is lining up, yet whenever you are taking the trade based on that break and retest strategy, it might end up hitting stop loss. And not only that, sometimes the risk to reward isn't as great because one of the methodologies to trade break and retest is once you've identified, for example, your previous resistance, and you're expecting that to turn into this zone of support, instead of you having your stop losses based on true structure points, sometimes I have seen people just use a set number of pips for their stop losses, which normally is around 30 pip stop loss or so, and um, 30 pip take profits. So oftentimes one to one or a one to two risk to reward ratio, and maybe for the better take profits, they would have um, a trailing stop loss and they will leave the take profit open and just manage it as the market moves. So that's already a couple different issues that we've identified identified with break and retest, which it may not be as consistent as we want it to be, or people who might be utilizing it, they might just be forgetting about taking into account the bigger picture and the market structure, and it might not end up being as profitable as you would like it to be. And also on top of that, the risk to reward 
again, it depends on your style of trading, but it may not be as great as you would like it to be. Calculating stop loss, the point that I have written over here is when I mention sometimes people have, for example, a set number of pips for their stop losses instead of basing it off major and important structure points in the market or going based on information that cannot be ignored when you're taking the trade. When you add all of these things up, it would affect the win rate of break and retest and the consistency of it because the win rate and consistency in my mind it's not just about how many trades you're taking and how many of them are winning. It's also about how consistent are your risk to rewards. How consistent are you catching, for example, at least a one to three risk to reward? How consistently the winning trades are actually going to hit your final take profit versus reversing and taking you out at break even, etc. etc. So a little bit more detailed than just your win and losses. Now, this video is not going to be a training on break and retest because I know majority of the people watching this already know what it is. We are here to talk about the similarities of break and retest to some more institutional concepts. So let's go ahead and get rid of this break and retest on the screen and let's speak a little bit more about institutional candles and imbalances. If you haven't watched my video on institutional candles, I would highly recommend to go and watch this now and then come back to this video so you get a better understanding of institutional candles. But hopefully by now you all have a good understanding of exactly what we mean by the term institutional candles and exactly what it looks like. So I'm going to just draw something on the, on the screen a little bit and we're going to have a look at the scenario. Let's say you saw a double top in the market where clearly you can identify this as pool of liquidity on top of these double tops. And sometimes you might see that the market would in a way manipulate it or grab that liquidity and then drop. And within this area is where your institutional candle gets formed. This strong candle that pushes to the upside that creates this bullish momentum which takes all the liquidity and then you will see the market reverse. And within the process of mitigation, what we've always spoken about is the market tends to come back and revisit either the open price or 50% somewhere within the range of that strong institutional candle, mitigate their positions and drop. Again, if this is not making sense and I'm talking fast, please go back to the institutional candles video. That video, I go through everything about it and I speak in detail about it and give you even a few screenshots for you to be able to read it in your own time. So this is generally how we would trade based on institutional candles. However, I've made it very simplified. Just take that into account that we don't just, you know, identify any candle as an institutional candle and boom, take a trade based on it. No, there's more that goes into it as you have seen in all the other videos. I'm going to briefly talk about imbalances, but in this case, it's, it's all the same idea. Imbalances Balances and institutional candles are not the same thing at all. However, in this specific scenario, they both end up doing the same thing. So let's say even in a scenario very similar to this, you end up having another double top and you will be able to see, imagine if that's a better looking double top, and um, you might end up, for example, seeing this pool of liquidity to the upside over there and you will get some type of a manipulation of these highs and then the market tends to reverse and come back down. And within this process, what gets formed is obviously, for example, some type of an institutional candle or a bullish candle, followed by the bearish candle z moving to the downside. As I've explained in that video, it doesn't have to be just one candle pushing up and one candle pushing down, but generally a quick move. And the next candle after that would look like this. Let me go ahead and put in the wicks as well, just so we can actually kind of imagine and see hopefully these um, imbalances a little bit easier. This is now your trading scenario. This is what you are seeing on the actual charts. And what we refer to as an imbalance is simply this gap between the wick of a previous candle and not the wick of the candle after that, but the candle after that one. I'm going to describe this in a slightly better way so it makes a little bit more sense. In a way, this is how I want you to look at it. Identify one candle preferably a candle that has had a relatively bigger body, look at the candlestick before that and look at the candlestick after that. It doesn't have to be bullish, bearish, bullish or bearish, bullish, bearish. It could be any order, but we've identified one candlestick. We're looking at the body of this candlestick more than anything else. Looking at the candlestick before that and the candlestick after that. And then ask yourself a question. Based on the wick of the candlestick before and the wick of the candlestick after, is there a gap? in between them or for example are the wicks like this they are actually touching each other or even um, going through each other in a way 
So there is no gap in between. If I identify this candle, the red candle, as the main candle, look at the wick before, which is that one, and the wick after, there's no gap in between them, right? But in the previous scenario, clearly you can see that there is a gap between them. I'm going to go through that one more time. We've identified one candle, we've looked at the wick before and the wick after, and you can clearly see that there's a gap in between those two wicks. That becomes your imbalance. Please don't take this concept away and identify any and every imbalance and expect to take trades based on it. There's so much more that goes into trading imbalances or using them as targets or seeing which ones are valid and which ones are not. I'm just helping you to have a very basic understanding of imbalances. But generally speaking, in these scenarios, similar to institutional candles, one of the things that we can wait for is in a way for the market to close this gap and then reverse. Or we can, again, similar to institutional candles, visit the 50% of that gap instead of necessarily a full closure of it. Bearing in mind we are not taking into account a lot of other important factors when we analyze a chart such as the higher time frame to lower time frame market structure, such as maybe different Wyckoff schematics that we would always look at, such as time of day, day of week, the type of news that might be coming out for those two given currencies over the next few days, and other factors that you have most definitely seen in the other videos as I'm breaking down the trades that we have previously taken. But now what I want to do is I want to have a look at these two on the lower time frames. I want to show what these can actually look like on the lower time frames. For example, this institutional candle scenario where we've had a pool of liquidity, we've had the double tops, manipulated them, the market has reversed, broken structure, pulled back to mid mitigate that institutional candle and we expect a rejection of it. Do you know what this will look like on the lower time frames? It will look very similar to a break and retest scenario where the market has gone up, come back down. Imagine if this is a better looking trending market, I'm going to say. So don't judge my drawing, please. <laughs> but generally speaking, this is what it will look like. This will be your double top scenario and um, this would be that uh, manipulation of the highs and this will be the drop to the downside. Let me just move a few things around. And then this moving back up, this is now your process of mitigation and then the continuation of that. Now, this is the same picture. Imagine if this down here is on the four hour time frame. What's up there? It could be, for example, on the 15 minute time frame. It's the same thing. We've got the double tops over there, that in a way pool of liquidity that's being created. And that's the manipulation. So this whole thing on the higher time frame would look like one big institutional candle pushing up the market then moving back down from that institutional candle and moving up to mitigate that institutional candle. So we would look at it in terms of an institutional candle mitigation. However, on the lower time frames, this could very well be a break and retest scenario. There'd be people trading this as a break and retest scenario because at the end of the day, that's one of the major structure points or a major support zone that just got taken, turning into resistance and then you can trade it to the downside. It's the same thing with imbalances, the exact same story. For example, this could be your area of imbalance in the market over there on the higher time frames. yet on the lower time frames, this could very well look like a break and retest scenario. Let's have a look at a couple examples on the charts for a better understanding of those concepts. This is, this is what we can actually see over here. So let's actually have a look at that on the hourly time frame first. So looking at this specific range in the market, a lot of traders after seeing this move to the upside, they would consider this a bullish market and then they would want to go based on a break and retest scenario. Whether they would consider that's their major zone of resistance and they would want to in a way enter their buy positions at these points over there or perhaps they would want to go ahead and put this as their zone of resistance and see a break above these zones as a break of structure or a break of that resistance and the moves back down as a retest of these resistance and looking to then take their trades to the upside. Now that looks really good. That is a break and retest scenario. However, how we would look at it is the same car crash from a different angle. On the daily time frame, when you look at the same picture, let's go to the daily time frame and look at it over there. That was the first level that we were talking about over there. This is simply a daily institutional candle. So instead of the market randomly just retesting a zone of resistance or a support or whatever it may be, now we can read it from a little bit more factual perspective where it's not just some random zone that you're drawing and whenever that zone gets broken and retested, then you can trade based on it. And because that level got broken, you should be expecting a retest. There's always deeper reasons behind that. That same level is now reflecting on this one institutional candle in the middle of the range. And you can also consider this range 
as a rally base rally, as I know a lot of you would trade supply and demand based on these rally base rally formations. That's practically what it is. It's not necessarily a break and retest of a support or resistance. It's talking about supply and demand and institutional candles. Let's have a look at a few more examples on the four hour time frame. Now, I really like this example at the top that I've identified this four hour institutional candle. You can see the strong candle pushing up the reversal straight after that. And obviously, in this case, you can see the mitigation, how we approached this range within the institutional candle again, mitigated the candle, and then the market started the decline. Funny thing is, looking at this same picture now on the 15 minute time frame, you will see how that institutional candle actually looks like a break and retest scenario on the lower time frames. And this is your break and retest scenario on the 15 minute where clearly you can see a previous zone of support, a rally away from that, then the break of that zone of support. And eventually this market pulled back up to retest that broken through zone of support. So it's in a way the same picture analyzed from two different perspectives. Let's go back to the four hour time frame quickly. The second example that I have drawn over here is a lot nicer, especially in terms of market structure, because from whatever perspective you want to look at it, this is now potentially a bearish trend. That's your high, low, lower high, lower low. So that could be classed as your first three waves in the market. A very basic way to identify this market structure, but to be honest with you, majorly we should be counting these highs, that high to this low, then the lower high. To the lower low so these are actually your major structure points in this in this range however now i want to focus on the imbalance that i spoke about so let's have a look at the second zone drawn over here remember what we spoke about identify one candle which is this candle that we are looking at right now look at the wick before and the wick after is there a gap in between those wicks yes there is so now that level is your imbalance right there I know I've said this about 10 times already, but I have to reiterate that you cannot just open your charts right now and try and find imbalances and be surprised that they don't work to your favor. This is not an imbalance training, so I didn't really go into too much detail about imbalances, just a general understanding for you. But now that's an imbalance that in a way we can actually potentially trade based on, especially now that we are looking at a bearish market. But let's have a look at that same picture now on the lower time frames. Again, I'm going to put this to the 15 minute time frame. You can see the same picture and the same scenario where instead of that imbalance, you can now go ahead and identify this as some type of a previous zone of support with multiple rejections of that zone of support, break of the zone of support, a pullback to retest it or in a way that support turning into a resistance and then people would be trading based on this. So it's very interesting to see that some of the most widely practiced retail methods of analysis that even a lot of institutional traders would look down on and wouldn't consider them true methodologies to actually trade, they are very similar to what we use in terms of institutional concepts, in terms of institutional candles and imbalances. This is another example over here, which however way you want to look at it, you can look at that as an institutional candle or even as an imbalance in the middle over there. But it's the same story. If I go ahead and now put this in replay mode and go to maybe hourly or the 15 minute time frame, you should be able to see that as some type of a break and retest in, instead of um, you know, an institutional candle or an imbalance. And this could be, for example, that zone of support that you would want to go based on, this previous zone of support that got broken to the downside and this pullback back into it. And this might have hit your stop loss. It depends on your way of trading break and retest, really. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about what's more important, which is the similarities of this. You have now seen a few examples of how similar they are. And I hope with what I went through at the start, it now makes sense about the actual thought process behind it and why these are similar in terms of break and retest in a way being a mitigation of an institutional candle or being that imbalance feel. But now the question is, okay, all we have spoken about is how amazing these concepts could be. But now it's time for the major question. What's the point? Why are we actually going through this? Is this to show break and retest works? Is this to show that institutional candles are the same as retail methods of analysis and all of these stuff is just another way or another rephrasing of how we look at the markets? Not at all. This is a way for you to now understand that number one, 
These concepts are not far from what you already know. So if you know break and retest, you should be able to utilize some of the stuff that you have learned from there in your institutional journey and take the same trades. Maybe not the same trades, but similar trades. However, this time, because you will be analyzing it from a little bit more factual perspective, it's going to be more confirmed. And also talking about what we were talking about at the beginning in terms of stop losses and in terms of risk to rewards and having a better idea of actually where to put your stop losses and how your risk to rewards and winning rates are going to be. The beautiful thing about institutional candles or trading based on them instead of break and retest is that they give you in a way all the information that you need in terms of where you should potentially enter. And also on top of that, where you should be having your stop losses. And this is going to be different for every trade. So instead of us just saying, you know what, whenever we want to trade this, we are going to have a 30 pip stop loss and a 30 pip take profit. What we can do is now we can go based on the higher time frames. We'd be looking at the weekly or monthly or daily. We'd look at areas that have already been manipulated on the higher time frames. We'd maybe look at the higher time frame institutional candles. And as we are approaching those higher time frame institutional candles, we'd monitor that on the lower time frames and in a way look for the same thing. Where have we manipulated and where have we formed institutional candles? And now that you know they are similar, I mean break and retest and institutional candles, then the information that you already know and you used to trade based on can be applied to answer your question about which institutional candle do I go based on? And the beautiful thing is when you have this story from the higher time frame to the lower time frame, when you're not just going based on a zone of support and resistance and a break and retest of that, then your trades are going to be much more secure and much more confirmed because you have taken into account higher time frame structure because you're not just ignoring everything else that's taking place and going based on what you see on that given time frame and not only that your stop losses are going to be placed at areas in the market that are much much more valid I can speak so much more about this concept. I can go into so much more information about it and give so many more examples. But instead of pouring all of that in one video, what I want you to do is I want you to watch this, re-watch this, have a good understanding of this. And I promise you in some of the future trade breakdowns that I will be posting in this channel over the next few weeks to come, I will also speak about this concept again. And I will show how some of the institutional candles that I would take trades based on can be looked at as break and retest but the way we would analyze it and get to take in the trade would make all the difference. The trades become much more confirmed and the risk to rewards become much better. But that brings us to a conclusion of this video. I hope it made sense and I hope you gained value from this video. If you did, do make sure to press the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers, which is insane. So thank you everyone for their support and thank you everyone for continuously showing love on the videos. But with that being said, have an amazing rest of your day. Let's elevate and let's catch some pips.